What's going on, YouTube? We've talked about it quite a bit in the past year or so, but there has been a big movement towards family SUVs with big space. One of the biggest offerings in the class has long been the Chevy Traverse, which is completely new this year. But the Traverse also has a sibling from GMC that is fully redesigned as well, the Acadia. It has grown massively and is now the same size as the Traverse. So should you go for the sportier and more affordable Chevy, or the more expensive and luxurious GMC? Well, let's go ahead and find out. Now we have a ton to cover in this General Motors SUV Smackdown, but let's first quickly establish the pricing and trim levels right from the start. Beginning with the all new Traverse, all that space is not coming cheap, since this fully loaded RS trim rings in at $58,090. Even still, that is going to be a good deal more affordable than the GMC. Even though the Denali starts at almost the same price as the RS Traverse, in order to get all the features equal to the Chevy, we have to add a couple pricey option packages. Overall, it presses further into the luxury space, with a price tag of $65,410. By the way, if you want to get the best price from local dealerships, and access to invoice pricing information for these two models or any vehicle, we have a tool on our website to do just that. It's quite helpful when shopping, so check the link in the description for more info. But as far as this comparison, it will be conducted in an objective way. We have done our best to weigh the points awarded throughout in major and minor categories. And at the end of the comparison, we'll talk about the price difference and see if the Acadia is giving you enough extra luxury and technology to justify that price discrepancy. We will also be discussing a new element we have been adding to recent comparisons, reliability and resell value information. But with that being said, let's get into this comparison. Starting here with the exteriors, even though they are siblings, you wouldn't be able to tell that from the exterior looks. For the new Traverse, Chevy has gone with a pretty sporty look, especially on the RS trim with this large black grille. On the flip side, the Acadia Denali is all about that bling factor, including with its signature satin and chrome mesh grille. Both models are boxier than the previous generations, and they come standard with premium LED lighting. They also have animations and dynamic turn signals, but only the Acadia has fog lamps. Moving to the sides, you can begin to get a sense of just how big these two are. The Acadia is nearly 11 inches longer than last year's model, and at 204 inches long, both of these two are starting to nip at the heels of the full-size Tahoe and Yukon. Our interior space breakdown is coming later in the comparison. But for now, you can see the large 22-inch alloy wheels that both models have. As we move around to the rear, you'll notice the interesting C-pillar design on the Chevy, as well as its sportier appearance. Both models have added black accents between the taillights, which are fully LED units with animations, by the way. Other elements include exposed wipers, spoilers, and quad-tipped exhaust outlets. Now, checking out some of the individual features. Both of their mirrors have heating, blind spot monitoring, auto dimming, and power folding. Speaking of blind spot monitoring, the other active safety features are very important for family SUVs. These two have you covered, with all four of them as standard equipment on all trims. And both of them also come equipped with the Super Cruise hands-free driving assist. This is a very impressive system that has auto lane changes and even works on some secondary roads now road but I can still press right there you'll see the green on the steering wheel which means Super Cruise is now active I'm hands-free driving um, and this is completely supported um, and this will keep running unless we come up to like an intersection with a stop sign or a red light it will warn me and uh, turn off but it's pretty cool to see this actually work on a side street basically yeah. Towing wise, both models can handle up to 5,000 pounds, and warranty wise, they are exactly the same. But the features, luxury, and comfort of the cabins are the things that are of foremost importance. So let's get into that, but first. If you're new here, we're brothers, and we've been reviewing cars since we were 12 and 16. We may be young, but we love cars.
and we'd love for you to subscribe to be a part of our Car Confections family. Let's learn a lot, have some fun with all the latest cars. As we walk towards the interiors, both models have smart entry systems, as you would expect, and they also have the same key fobs with remote start. There are not sensors behind their door handles, so you will have to press the buttons to unlock. Once we open up the doors, the interiors are completely different from each other, even more so than the exteriors. Despite being siblings, this is certainly not the badge engineering of the 90s, and many of the elements are significantly elevated on the Denali, such as the seats. While the number of adjustments is the same, as well as heating and ventilation, you can see that GMC is using a more premium quilted leather. Both have memory functions, but one thing worth noting is that the Traverse RS is only available in this black and red combo, while the Acadia gives you an additional lighter color choice. Once we climb inside, we can get into the major point category of overall material quality. This shouldn't surprise you, but the new Acadia Denali really elevates the interior over the last generation, and the Traverse, with lots of leather trim, stitching details, real open pore wood, and aluminum accents. These materials are all included even without the option packages that we have, so aka the same price as the Traverse RS. While certainly not bad, the Chevy comes across as much more utilitarian. After startup, you'll see 11 inch digital gauge clusters on both of them, with fully customizable graphics. But if you don't want to have to divert your gaze to look down, only the Acadia offers a head-up display. Moving back to the leather wrapped steering wheels, both feel nice in the hand, to go along with heating and power tilt and telescoping functionalities. Now let's talk about the overall interior storage, which is a huge area that both SUVs are literally huge in. The main center consoles are massive, fitting 17 and 16 donuts in the Traverse and Acadia respectively. They also have extra cubbies up front with wireless phone charging pads and center pass-throughs as well. Overall, we think we'll call this area even Steven. Moving on to the shifters, this is one of the only places where they are exactly the same with their new column mounted electronic ones. And when you use the shifters to engage reverse, there is something cool to note here. All trims on both SUVs get the 360 degree camera system, even the base models. Moving on, while both of these two have climate controls integrated into the bottom rows of the screen, they also have redundant physical controls to make operation easier. These are three zone automatic systems. We also have physical volume knobs embedded into the screens themselves. Let's go ahead and give those systems a sample. As you would expect, the Acadia's available Bose Performance Series sound system with six extra speakers is the more well-rounded audio system. So thus far, this interior comparison has been pretty one-sided in favor of the GMC, but that changes right now with the screens. It's actually the Chevy that has the larger screen at 17.7 inches versus 15 in the GMC. Obviously, they are oriented oppositely. And the integrated look versus the floating design debate will come down to personal preference. So, go down below and let us know which one you prefer in the comments. Size aside, they have the same software functionality, meaning both models have wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, integrated navigation, and Google Apps built in, like Maps and Assistant. Since there's been a lot of confusion about this recently, I will repeat, both models do indeed have wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay since they are not EVs. Last but certainly not least for the front of the interiors, both models have digital camera rear view mirrors and large panoramic sunroofs. 
But now let's move into the rear spaces because this is probably the reason you're interested in SUVs of this size in the first place. As platform mates, it shouldn't come as a surprise that they have the same excellent space measures at 41.5 inches of legroom and 40 inches of headroom. The features list is also largely the same. There are rear climate controls, vents, two USB ports, household power outlets, and heated rear seats. Both have the captain's chair seating arrangement on these trims, and neither offer ventilation. Let's head to the next row of seats. As far as access to the third rows, both have sliding mechanisms to make that simple, and the seats tilt forward so that car seats can remain installed. As far as space and comfort are concerned, they are exactly the same, and very impressive. We have enough legroom even when the second row is all the way slid back, and there is also good thigh support as well. There are three third row seats, and we have vents and USB connections. After popping open the hands-free power tailgates, we have class leading capacity on both of them. These two are huge compared to even already large models like the Honda Pilot. Technically, Traverse has 0.1 cubic feet more maximum space, but you'll be more than satisfied either way. The third and second rows power fold from the rear. All right, that's it for the interiors. So now let's take this fight to the streets. Outside of space figures, these two are very different from each other in the things you can see, but under the hoods, they are the same. Both have traded their V6s from last year to 2.5 liter turbocharged 4 cylinder engines with 328 horsepower and 326 pound feet of torque. They actually have more power than those old V6s, and they accelerate the same in both models. Alright, that's 60 miles an hour with this all new GMC Acadia. Now, like we were talking about the spec dump, we have really big changes under the hood for this next generation Acadia. You used to have kind of a, a two-prong approach. You had a four-cylinder engine on your low trims. You had the V6 on most of the other trim levels, including the Denali. But now we've gone to a 2.5 liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine. across the yeah. entire lineup. And overall power has actually improved quite a bit. Um, you're looking at 18 more horsepower, uh, quite a lot of more torque as well, um, because that is the nature of you know this turbocharged engine. Yeah, so um, overall power figures, 328 horsepower, 326 pound-feet of torque. So like Drew said, I think you're really gonna notice the biggest benefit when it comes to the torque figure. Part of the punchy feel you get on these two comes from the transmissions. As you'd expect, they are the same, using a smooth shifting 8-speed automatic transmission. We have the regular all-wheel drive systems for these two, but twin clutch all-wheel drive is offered on the Z71 and AT4 trims respectively. Alright, so that was an acceleration from a complete stop going a bit downhill. Let's talk about the other aspect of the powertrain. So that of course is our transmission. We've got an eight speed automatic transmission. Uh, through our time we've spent with this, I think it's a nice and responsive transmission. Really no complaints. It's nice and smooth overall. Now let's talk about the other aspect of the powertrain. That is an eight speed automatic transmission. Uh, overall, this transmission feels smooth and responsive. But it's definitely not all about speed, since comfort is extremely important for family crossovers. You might be wondering if the 22s impact the ride quality. And while they definitely do, both SUVs are still reasonably pleasant despite them. The big consideration here is that the Acadia with the Denali Reserve package gets frequency-based dampers, which help things feel better than the Traverse RS. On the flip side of things, it's the Traverse that handles better when cornering, although neither of them are sporty by any stretch of the imagination. But I'm sure you're really curious as to how this Acadia Denali rides, and I'm 
very happy to tell you that this does indeed ride like a luxury SUV should. In our time with it here in uh, South Carolina, I've been very impressed with the way the suspension handles uh, bumps in the road. Well, uh, we do have the largest 22-inch alloy wheels on board, and um, because of that, I was a little concerned that it may ride a little rougher than it should, but overall, I think they've done a great job. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you choose the Denali Reser Reserve Package, which does give you those 22-inch alloy wheels, uh, they give you frequency-based dampers, um, so that can adjust uh, the suspension setup. So I moved us into sport mode for a quick discussion about the driving dynamics. Obviously, this is a big family three-row. This is not people's primary concern. We've already addressed people's primary yeah. concerns, but I do want to mention it still because there are differences between different models in the segment. Um, so in terms of this, this is the RS, so it does have a slightly different suspension tune versus the other trim levels. And as we kind of go through this rolling corner here, overall, body control is pretty well managed. In addition to having comfortable rides, let's talk about the noise levels in the cabins. Here at Car Confections, we take sound level readings for all the vehicles we review, and we did it for these two as well, but on the press drive in other states instead of at home in Kentucky. Because of this, these are unofficial and unscorable figures, but we will include the figures for reference anyways. Stay tuned for an official test in Kentucky. I gave it a little bit longer there because the car was actually having trouble keeping uh, 55 miles per I'm hour. I'm better at it than that. I know, is. that's what I was going to say. I think you're better than the car. 57.7 um, decibels is what we are sitting at. 51.7 decibels is our official car confections sound level reading for this Acadia Denali. Wow. And the last on-the-road item to discuss is fuel economy. It's important to note that neither model offers a hybrid or plug-in hybrid variant, meaning that 21 mpg combined is the best you can expect from their turbo four-cylinders. In our reviews and comparisons, we are also adding in reliability and resell information to give you a better picture of the overall value beyond just the original MSRP. Beginning with reliability, we developed the Combined Reliability Index, which takes into account several studies from trustworthy sources and combines them in a way that gives you a more realistic picture. In this respect, both Chevy and GMC are rated well above industry average. GMC, 9 slots above average, giving it 0.9 points, and Chevy as the second highest brand, 15 slots above average, giving it 1.5 points. We also put Mason's economics degree to work to develop a detailed predicted resale value tool. After 5 years and 60,000 miles, the advantage flips in favor of the GMC, although just slightly. GMC has a predicted resale value of 55.81% after 5 years, and Chevy is close behind with 54.71% expected to be retained. That's not enough of a difference to award a point. Resale value is obviously important because it determines how much money you get back, but we can't forget about the price difference at the original purchase. This Acadia cost a lot more than the Traverse, $7,320 to be exact. Since they fall between forty dollars and $75,000, Traverse will get a half point per $1,000 of difference, or 3.5 points. I want to emphasize that if money, reliability, or resale value matter less to you personally, feel free to disregard these points. And if you'd like to check out all our data about reliability and resale values, as well as learn about our methodology, make sure to head to carconfections.com slash resale and slash reliability. Buying a car is a big decision, and this is a great place to compare all the vehicle makes that you might be cross shopping. So that's it for another exciting comparison, this time between two of the newest and biggest options your family could buy. Let's quickly recap here, though, and discuss who should be your personal winner. So the Traverse should probably be your pick. If you're wanting mostly the same features as the Acadia, but saving money. Obviously, it is going to be less expensive than that Acadia, and like I said, give you most of the same features, although there are a few missing ones. 
Also, the big reason I think would be if you prefer the sportier design, it certainly looks more athletic. Yeah, on the flip side, the Acadia should be your choice if you value that luxury experience that you get in the Denali trim level specifically. It is going to feel a lot more premium than the Traverse. It also has a little bit more of a sophisticated design going with that luxury feel. And there's also a few exclusive features that you cannot get on the Traverse, such as the head-up display. But we want to know your thoughts down below. Are you taking the Acadia or the Traverse? Let us know what you're thinking. Now, also, if you're looking to buy either one of these vehicles, we would encourage you to go to carconfections.com slash new car quotes. Now, the reason you do that is because we have a tool on our website that will connect you with local car dealers in your area to get to the best price. It's also going to give you access to invoice pricing information, which is a great tool for dealership negotiation. If you'd like to take advantage of that, a link is provided in our video description. There's also a pinned comment at the top of this video. Well, guys, that's going to be where we leave off on this video. If you're already a fan and subscriber, thank you so much for your continued support. And if you're not already a part of our family, we would encourage you to hit that subscribe button down below to be a part of our family, as well as to get access to a lot more car reviews. We'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.